Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this yes. is the R&B Money Podcast. Very epic moment. The authority <laughs> on all. I don't mind going to scream today. I don't have to scream. Nope. I don't have. Today is a day of elegance. You better not. To, to, today, you see how my shirt is buttoned all the way up to the top? You see your shirt? <laughs> we buttoned up. Today is a day of elegance. We are buttoned up today. Yes, we are. What's happening today is just out. Uh, Jay, you know what? What? If you ever need me, I will be there for you. Ah, that's what friends are for. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Dion Warwick. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my. Wow. Hello. Hello. Wow. Um, we call ourselves the authority on all things R and B. Um okay. because we've he's He's been in it since a child. Um, yes, a long time. Not, but not, not, yeah, not, not that long. Not that I long. go from gospel to, you know, to the mm-hmm. R&B world. But in terms of our hands reaching, you know, we can, we've, we've been able to reach some of the reach youngest. Yes, yes, to the, to the, and, and what you are doing for the validation of the word authority yeah. for us today. Oh, well, a I, whole don't, I don't know about that. I really uh, don't. Everybody thinks I know everything. I do not know everything. It's not what you know. It's what you've done. And who you are. Oh. And who you are. Okay. Yes. This is, this is, this is a, this is a pop your collar pod. This is, <laughs> this is, this is a yeah. moment yeah. for you to yeah. say it how yeah. you feel it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We are celebrating you today unapologetically. Okay. That I'll, way. I'll, 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 I'll take that. So you can do no wrong here today. <laughs> oh, that makes me feel so much better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No wrong. Um, I want to, I want to start off by saying, um, wow, what an, what a, what an amazing body of work. Yeah. What an amazing blessed, really body of work. And I mean, um, it goes back to a time where I pulled up the one of the videos, I think it was like a TV, television video where it was like really in black and white. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like in real black and white. <laughs> true. You know what I mean? That's and it's true, like, true. It's like it. you come from that <laughs> to to hear. Yeah. And the celebration still continues. What it does that is. feel like? It is sometimes overwhelming, you know. Um, things that are coming to me as rapidly as they're coming. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always considered them blessings, you know. Um, I don't use the word award. I use the word reward. Mm-hmm. It's for work that I have done and I'm now being recognized for and appreciated for. Um, but it has been truly amazing what's going on right now for me. Yeah. You know, one thing right after the other, right after the other. In fact, I have looked up and said, hey, I call God Charlie. That's my personal friend. <laughs> I gotta get a name for my God. Can we slow it down? Just, <laughs> Charlie, just, can we slow just a minute. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> and not Uncle not to be confused with Uncle Charlie. That burn rub on me. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. <laughs> no, but you know, um it's it's uh, it's truly it's it's becoming fun. Yeah. You know, it really is. Yeah. It's like, oh, another one? <laughs> you know, it's like, wow. I am truly, as I said, I'm blessed. Really am. A lot of times we love to go like to the go back to the very, very beginning. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we did some reading where yeah. we're, we're students of the game. Um we 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 we, we know it starts in the church. We know that. We <laughs> know that's clear. Doubt. It is clear. It's clear. 
Um, but you go in the studio and you're singing these backgrounds mm-hmm. and someone is like her. Yeah. She's the one. Was that a thing where, because that was, that was family. That was your family, right? Yeah. The, it was the gospel air. Yeah, the gospel air. Yes. Was, was that a thing where, because a lot of times, you know, when, when groups are on this group mission, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It, it's, some the the soloist the solo artist is inevitable, but it's still a hard break. You know what I mean? Was was that a tough moment or a tough decision for you to make? No, you know I I wasn't the solo solo lead singer. My mm. sister was our lead singer. Mm. <laughs> I, I sang tenor. <laughs> no way. Yeah, and um, no, as it happened, um, we were doing a background session for The Drifters mm-hmm. and a song that Bert had written with another songwriter, Bob Hilliard. Um, I laughingly say most of the time that I must have been singing too loud. But as it was, I, <laughs> you know, I read music. Mm-hmm. And that was, I think, what caught his eye more than anything else. It was the education. I had the ability to read, yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, he approached me and asked if I would be interested in doing demonstration records mm-hmm. of songs he'd be writing with Hal David. And it was a way to supplement that little scholarship I got from New Hope at the church mm. uh, to go to Hart College. So I was helping my mom and my dad keep that money so I could stay in school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I said, yeah. And started doing demonstration records, along with more background work. When did you learn how to read music? I started piano lessons at the age of seven. Ah, uh, okay. So okay. I've been reading a long time. Okay, okay. <laughs> a very long time. I was supposed to read music. <laughs> um, <laughs> you were supposed to? <laughs> I was supposed to. My grandmother put me with this you know with a, with this piano teacher uh-huh. and I had already been playing by ear yeah and so you know the the program was the program in terms of where you start at middle C with your thumbs and the whole <laughs> and I was already playing church chords and all these <laughs> right. things and it was taking me so far back like I felt like it was a waste of time mistake on my part uh-huh. and then in terms of you being able to read music, like and read those charts in the background, you know, singing those backgrounds in those spaces. Mm-hmm. I got a scholarship to Morgan State from, uh, God rest his old Dr. Carter, an amazing musician, right? And the first day of school, you know, I walk in class and they start p- handing out, you know, sheet music. I'm like, okay, we getting ready to learn something. Uh-huh. I'm like, all right, we gonna learn. <laughs> and I open my little book and I'm sitting next to all the people in the choir and Dr. Carter comes walking in. He's real James Brown with it too. Afro, <laughs> boots, leather jacket. You know what I'm saying? Like the thin leather, like suit jacket. No, he the whole, he the whole movie, right? <laughs> Dr. Conway's on the piano and he goes and he says, all right, we're going to start uh, measure one. <sighs> and everybody starts singing. I'm like this. What's going on, when was y'all? Who was gonna tell me? Y'all rehearsed all week, didn't y'all? Y'all had rehearsals, rehearsals. Uh, <laughs> no, all, all they, that play by ear didn't mean nothing. 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 They were reading fresh uh-huh. off sight. That's right. And so, like, when you when you when you're saying that, like, I'm just I'm gathering so many pictures of how music was made back then. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know. Well, when you have composers, mm-hmm. you know, that, mm-hmm. and I really deemed myself very fortunate in that I felt and still feel to this day I had two of the most prolific yes. composer and writer, I call Hal David a poet, actually, yeah. Yeah. to come along during that period of time. I... um like I said, I, I just, we, we we were known in the industry as a triangle marriage that worked. Wow. And that's what we were. We became family. We became very dear friends. Um, 
And we find those kinds of um, people that create the way they were creating and begin creating specifically for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you become one. It's a different kind of magic, right? Because it's 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 rare when you find these marriages because a lot of times in in our music space mm-hmm. it's always searching from producer to producer yeah. to writer yeah. to writer trying to find the hit more so yeah. than having your own sound exactly it's sitting in and finding the magic like we talked about uh uh Brandy Dark Child on the Sean yeah before mm-hmm. about some marriages are just so timeless mm-hmm. yeah that they'll just never be recreated. Yeah. True that. Never be recreated. True and that. Y- and how many years? We were together um about fifteen years. And then we were apart for uh, close to twelve years. Uh-huh. And then we got back together. <laughs> so it was never it was it's a, little, it's a family quarrel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And nobody wanted to agree with it, each other. So I said, y'all, <laughs> go your way, I'm going to go mine, but you're going to pay me because you're supposed to give me something that you're not, you're not you're saying you're not going to give me. Hmm. They owed me recordings. And I, I can remember like it was yesterday. I was with Warner Brothers at the time. And... Uh, Mo Austin, who was president at the time, <laughs> he said to me, oh, now you know you owe us this amount of albums. I said, yeah. And you know, the contract is between you, Backrack, and David. I said, yeah. And you know, they're not talking to each other. I said, yeah. I said, well, you have to get them back together to do the CDs, the albums for you. Or Warner Brothers is going to have to sue you. I said, uh-uh. Warner Brothers is not going to do Dion. Yeah. So he says either that or you're going to have to sue them. I said, that's an easy thing to do. <laughs> 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 there we are. <laughs> Give me my money. And, and that's what I did. <laughs> and got my money. Wow. Yeah, you know, I, they knew they were wrong. Right. But they they weren't working together at the time. Yeah, exactly. They, they, and it affected everything. Yeah. And I was the one that they was like, hello. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, because they made it perfectly clear they exclusively were my producer-songwriters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everybody just wouldn't come near me with songs. So no one would even submit songs to no. you? No. Because they just knew. They knew. You know, these I mean, and, and, and how, like, but you yeah, can't even tough, compare tough, tough other people's to records yeah, to, like, yeah, walk on by yeah, and say a little, like, yeah. what do you, like, what would we even submit if those, if you're putting out those type of records at that high of a level? Well, I get you, it. I, you know, I, um, in fact, I made a comment to Bert. Um, I heard a song that came out of Philadelphia. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Produced and written by one of my dear, dear friends. And I made a call. I said, Hey, Bert. Hey, have you heard of a little group called Stylistics? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I said, Well, I'm going to the airport the other day, and somebody said, I know you had a new record out. I said, I don't. He said, Oh, yeah, you do. I said, No, I don't. See, we heard the other day, I said, no, you heard Russell singing, not Dion. Tom Bell. And I told Bert that day, I said, you know what? You better get up on your, your gig, because this little boy out of Philadelphia is on your butt. He is on you. And rightfully so. Bomb, as I called him, because of the way he spelled his oh, name. Oh, yeah, the H in his name. G-H-O-M, yeah. yes. Yeah. I used to call him Bomb. Hey, uh-huh. Tom, you know, what you doing? He said, well, I want you to have this song, but couldn't get past that back rack man. I said, uh-huh, okay. But that's the way it was. Yeah. 
It was territorial though, because mm-hmm. y'all had a, y'all had a streak. Y'all had a thing. Oh yeah, we had a, and it was a family thing. Yeah, you know, we really were that close. You know, I put my feet under their dining room table, and they put their feet under my mama's dining room table. Yeah. So we were basically as one. How did it feel? To I mean, for lack of a better term, to rule decades, <laughs> where you just have records. Nobody had bigger you, records you in the sixties. I mean, like, you want to yeah, count, you wanna count the hits? You want to? No. <laughs> no. Um, you know, it it was something. I don't really think I thought about it. Mm-hmm. Because once I did it, and I was on the road as much as I was, mm. I didn't have time to think about that. Mm-hmm. And until so people started pointing it out to me, it's like, what? No, come on, get out of my face. But that's what was going on in my life, and it was happening so rapidly. So you're you know? not even paying attention to the charts. Exactly. Never did. Still don't. That's when you got so many. When you have so many. <laughs> when there's so many hits. So, when you got your one hit, you like, yeah, you know, right now it's number five. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have we had that conversation with somebody? <laughs> yeah, you know, right now, because we number. She's like, yeah. We number eight with a bubble. You know, yeah, we just with trying, a bubble? <laughs> we, we with a bubble. We, uh, we, we trended up. I'm trying to tell you, the research is coming back real good. <laughs> Once you get past 20, it's like, so when you get your first hit record, you go immediately on the road. Yeah, exactly. And um, literally would come in off the road to to do a session. If we were doing a project at the time, um, the um, prime example was the Promises session. Um which was a funny story. Um, the producer of the show, I can't ever remember his name. I used to call him Little Caesar. What is his name? She got nicknames for everybody. <laughs> can't think his name. Anyway. So Little Caesar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He um, he brought the cast to my session when I was recording Promises because they just, I mean, Promises is not the easiest song to sing. Mm-hmm. And I remember Jerry Albrecht said to me, how the hell do you do that? I said, very carefully. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do that. Just throw but, that. You know, so I think if you look at the chart of Promises, it's a meter change every bar. So again, you, you literally are reading meters. People don't even understand what that is. Oh, every bar. If it's a four four measure bar, it's one, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. And with promises it was one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Switching every yeah. yeah. Every other bar. Y'all was going crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm saying you're singing it that way. Yeah. <laughs> People but you, look at me like I've lost my mind. But, but you <laughs> had to have so much musical information in order to pull that off. Because listening to it, it you make it sound it's, it's easy. Seamless. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's what everybody says. But it, it's not. It's not easy. I don't see it. Yes, I do. I understand why. And it's because I I I think the three of us were were glued together, mm-hmm. you know? Because mm-hmm. there was nothing that in fact it got so funny between us. I felt that every time I went to the studio, Bert would write and say, Okay, let's see if you can do this. Yeah, yeah, okay. let's, yeah, let's yeah, see if you can yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And, I, and I felt you know that was the challenge, which was wonderful. It helped me tremendously in college, tremendously. Um, at being able to sight read as fast as I could, mm-hmm. and also playing. Right. So, um, 
I never really gave it a second thought. But I yet to hear anybody attempt to sing it in performance. Because they, they definitely sing your songs, and that's definitely not that one, one of them. <laughs> that, I know, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Is, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they pick and choose. Yes. Hey, but the promises, <laughs> yes, they no, do. No, no, the promises, I don't know about that one. Just, 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 just see about, <laughs> Can you dial up, walk on by? Well, dial up, walk on by for me. Uh, 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 what's another one with a crazy time? Is um, what Anyone who had a heart. Yeah. Um, the one that, and Burton Howell didn't write this one, though. Mm-hmm. Andre and Dory Previn wrote A Valley of the Dolls, mm-hmm. which is also one of those. Yeah. You know, you think it's going somewhere that, that never gets to. You just like, oh, wait a minute. She didn't sing that note there. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't sing that note there because it wasn't written for that, that time signature. You know, everybody does that to me. <laughs> Doing Heartbreaker with the Gibb Brothers. Mm-hmm. They felt, oh, yeah, let's give her something that goes around the corner three or four times before it gets to, to the avenue. Yeah. You couldn't do that with the artists now. You just couldn't. <laughs> you just couldn't do that. No, you can't. You know, no, you no. can't. I'm, I'm, I'm watching a, a, a video of you, and I'm watching, I'm watching the construction. I'm watching you all sit there and and build mm-hmm. as as Bert's playing and how's there which is been in your and you're singing you y'all are going back it's like it's like this crazy thing that you guys are doing it's a partnership where it's like okay there's a challenge there but of course it's like making sure that we're in the right place musically vocally and lyrically all at the same time mm-hmm. exactly which is rare because, you know, in these days, they just make a record, have somebody demo it, here, listen to this. <laughs> yeah. Just copy. Just, yeah. It's never like, yeah. hey, sit in here and let's work through the progressions mm-hmm. of this idea we have and let's make sure you land perfectly within that realm. <laughs> exactly. It's called creativity, ultimate creativity. Uh-huh. That's and, the magic. Witness. And ain't no punch in the vocals. We're going to sing this thing through. We're going to rehearse it. And it's top to bottom, huh? Top to bottom. Huh? It's top to bottom. You were singing those songs top to bottom. Yeah. You know what? Let's, <laughs> let's, we're going to go ahead and clap. We're going to go ahead and clap for that. Because <laughs> I've, I've only sang one song top to bottom. <laughs> <laughs> My entire career. <laughs> My, and, and I thank God I did. Because when I prepared you to perform in live. Because when I sing these other songs that I punched, (laughs) (laughs) we're going to need to bring that down a whole step, if you don't mind. uh, (laughs) We're not going to be able to cover the end of that if we (laughs) we do it this way. We we didn't know anything about that. You know, no. Left hand corner, straight out. You, and you know why I recorded that song like that? Maybe I deserve. You know why I recorded that song like that? Why? You had no more studio time? Yeah. <laughs> I was probably running low for sure. But I had done a, I had did a session uh-huh. with Gladys Knight. Yeah. And we were working on her gospel album. Uh-huh. And I had I had done this. They were like, she needs a really cool interlude, something that, you know what I mean? Some, you know, just, just start the album or be somewhere cool. Mm-hmm. And so I did this like, almost like two minute you know thing with just good movements and singing and all like and so I put it together and she comes into the studio and and she's like okay let me hear it and I, and I play it and she's like I like that okay I'm gonna I'm just be back here just keep playing it and I'm just I'm just you know we just we just waiting <laughs> waiting on Miss Gladys it's like, it's cool right she's right back there right so after about maybe like Five or six listens, she says, "Okay, I'm ready, baby." I was like, "Okay, all right, well, mm-hmm. go, away. go on on in. Set set the mic up, and we said we're gonna start you right here at the top." She's like, "All right, let's get it," and we press record, and she goes from top to bottom, to bottom, mm-hmm. flawlessly. Mm-hmm. No auto tune. These are adats. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no extra nothing. And I'm sitting there with the engineer when she finishes, and I'm like, <laughs> he looking at me. I'm looking at him. I was like, uh, 
Should I, should I tell That's her to do I it do. again? Should I tell her okay. to do it again? <laughs> I'm going to just tell her to do it again so I can feel like I'm doing something. <laughs> Uh, Miss Glass Night, that was absolutely amazing. Um, maybe on this one, just be amazing. Here we go, one more time. <laughs> From top to bottom. Top to bottom. Hello. And I said, thank you for coming. <laughs> Miss Glass. Yeah. You may go home. <laughs> and that made me had had to have to at least try it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I had to at least yeah. try it, and that's how I sang. Maybe I deserve top to bottom. What you hear on that song is just what I had left by the end of that song. And I can sing that song live every night uh-huh. because of that. Yeah. Why would you not want to do it that way? Because we lazy. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm going to be honest with you. No, I understand because I can remember like yesterday how our babies, and that's what I call them, mm-hmm. um, We'll block a studio for a, a year. And they'll come in maybe once every three weeks to sing one note and leave. Mm. But they block that studio out for a year, and nobody can do anything in that studio for a year. Mm-hmm. But that's how they do it, one note at a time. Mm-mm. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, senselessly wasting money and people's time. Yeah, you come. you come from a different time. Um, can we talk about some of these some of these songs? Just yeah. just, just 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 a couple. I want to. I'm gonna start. With, I know my brother Valentine has a few too on his mind. Yeah. Um, don't make me over. Yeah. That's your first hit. My very first recording. Mm-hmm. So, but your very first recording as well. Yeah. Oh, so the first song ever that you recorded for you over. was a hit record as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. so me, you know, I, I, I think I know a lot of what you've done, and I remember a young lady by the name of Sybil. Yeah. Singing this song called "Don't, Don't Make Me, me Over,", over. Mm-hmm. and it was one of my favorite songs. Yeah. And I was two days years old <laughs> to today. <laughs> Knowing that that was your song. Yeah. <laughs> 1962. Okay. 1962. Simple wasn't even thought of. <laughs> and, and, your, and your time signature was yeah. crazy in that one. Yeah. So uh, me, imagine me like knowing, thinking all this time that don't make me over the civil song. I'm in, and then I go back and hear the original. I'm like, <laughs> mind blowing. You know, I'll tell you something. Uh, she came over, and she's from England. Mm-hmm. She came over to do my show, my friends and me. And it's the first thing she said, you know, I recorded your song. I said, yeah, no, you recorded my song, which is wonderful. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, she said, well, what did you think? And before I could think, you know, I have a very bad habit. My mouth, sometimes my foot gets plopped right in my, mm. <laughs> my mm. mouth. But I said, I said yeah, you know what, the only thing about it, the first note you sing on the song is not the right note. She said, it isn't? I said, no, it isn't. She said, oh, well, I have to go and listen to your record again before I sing that song again. But she sings two notes wrong on it, the first two notes. She said, oh, I didn't know that. She sings, don't make me over. That's not what she's supposed to sing. Don't make, don't make me over. Those are the right notes. So if you remake any of her music, put out the disclaimer. She's cool. going to call you out when she <laughs> sees you in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, baby. <laughs> no. Them notes, them notes ain't them, them, them notes ain't right. You know, I see what you was going for. I see what you was going for. I see what you, I see what you was going for. <laughs> but because she decided. And, or our producers or whoever it was that decided to re-record the song to make it another genre mm-hmm. of music. Mm-hmm. 
So it gave her the liberty to do what she wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Speaking of fine. genre, but speaking of genre, yes, I feel. You know, I, I'm one of I'm one of those people who feel like I, I want to hold everybody to R and B. I believe everybody's an R and B singer. Mm-hmm. But when I look over your career and I studied your career, it felt as if it wasn't a genre at all when it came to your music. Absolutely. Thank you so much for saying that. Everybody, I know all interviews, them. well, how do you categorize? I said, that's the beauty of me. I cannot be categorized. Yeah. No. You yeah. know, I mean, I, there have been so many instances where and and I tell people I am whatever the listening ear decides I am. You think mm-hmm. I'm gospel? That's what I am. Rock and roll, you think rock and B, pop, whatever it is. Don't put me in a box. You can't put me there. You mm. never know where I'm gonna be musically. Yeah. And they said, Well, what would you say your music is? I said, That you just said it. I'm music. Your music. Mm. That's all. No, because when you listen to the songs, yeah, it's it's. It's just it's, music. It's just great music. Yeah, it's just great music. Mm-hmm. It's great listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love it. I do. And even just all the people who sampled or covered, you know, because he he said we were gonna go down the songs mm-hmm. and of songs that you know that that stuck out for us. Mm-hmm. Most people don't know. Yeah. A house is not a home. I know. <laughs> is your song? Yeah, I know. You That's so funny too. Too. Salute to Luther. Yeah. Salute. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, you know, well Luther's was my heart. I, mm-hmm. I miss him so terribly. Mm-hmm. We talked every day. But um, I was the first one to hear his, his recording of it. Mm-hmm. He decided he wanted to record the songs that Dion Warwick had recorded. House is Not Home isn't the only one. Anyone who had a heart. Oh, was the only time I was loved. Yes. You know, he, he just, I think he wanted to do my entire catalog, which is fine. <laughs> you know, I, I mean. That was your friend. Yeah, 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 you know. And he called me and he said, listen, I just recorded one of your songs. I want you to hear it and tell me what you think. And over the telephone is the way I heard A House Is Not A Home. And at the end of that song, I said, you know what, Lisa? I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I told him, I hate you. He said, no, you can't hate me. I said, yes, I do. I said, I'm going to call you back because I have to make a phone call. And I called both Bert and I called Hal. Hmm. And I let them know. I said, you know, I just heard something that both of you should know. The definitive version of a song called A House Is Not A Home and recorded by Luther Vandross. And believe me, as far as I am concerned, I feel it is the definitive version. Wow. You know, although he decided he just wanted to, whatever you record, I'm going to record it too. That was his whole attitude. But, I mean, he took the song to another level. Mm-hmm. Totally another level. Yeah. No, I, I, it, I didn't know until I was older. Yeah. I didn't know until, I, as a kid. Of course. Salute the Vandross song. Yeah. Uh-huh. I would have yeah. probably fought you. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you were saying it. As much <laughs> as I could, it'd been all the way wrong. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> well, the first first person to record that was Brooke Benton. Oh, so you didn't record it first? No. <sighs> you know what? That's another question I have. Because there was one song where you were like the 75th person that recorded. I can't remember which song that was. A song called Alfie. 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 <laughs> How does that, because it, it wasn't like it was a lot of generations apart. No, but you it know. Was, how did that work they back were, then? Um, Bert and Al were commissioned to write the theme for the film. For the movie, huh? Mm-hmm. And being that it was financed by British money. Mm-hmm. They decided they wanted a British artist to record it. And uh, a guy named Scylla Black mm-hmm. did the title song for the film. So she was the first person to record it. Mm-hmm. And it has been recorded. I was the 43rd person 
actually to record it and and did not want to record it then. Like it it had been out 42 times already? 43. Yes, it had been out 42 times already. That is crazy. It yeah. was running that publishing up. What? Oh, yeah. All those royalties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was recorded, ironically, when films are distributed by different companies. Mm -hmm. United Artists distributed it here in the States. Sonny and Cher recorded it for the title. Mm. Sonny Rollins recorded it when it was released in Australia. And it just looped itself around and around and around. That is a copyright. That's a but that is a thing that that don't exist anymore. Yeah, no, yeah. no, not even close. No. I'm gonna listen to the radio today. I'm gonna see what what it would sound good. And then I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna just it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not ch don't change the words. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> hey man, you think you can send me that same track? The one you just did? Because I I never understood how that worked. Because I knew that they would take a song and then. One artist will be recording it, and then they would take the same song and then give it to another artist, and then they would record it, and then they would give it to this artist, and they would record it, and then finally by the fourth or fifth artist, then it was a hit song. Yeah. Somehow or another. <laughs> yeah. They're like, listen, the artist might not work, but this song works. But the song wouldn't be a hit but you, until it got to the right, person. The right artist. The right artist. And they would keep trying their shot with that song. Publishers, allow us... <laughs> To keep moving this song this around, song around, because it's not the song; it's probably the artist. It's probably your weak artist. It's probably your weak <laughs> artist, man. You know what I'm saying? We we can help you make more money if you let us move these songs around a yeah, little more. Yeah, about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> I got another one. Okay. That I was, that I was a little lost on. Say a little prayer. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Aretha's song. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can say it wasn't. <laughs> it was my song, okay? <laughs> yes, it was. And still is. And still is. <laughs> and so I go see, you know, I, I love movies. Uh-huh. Did, did you see the movie when they when they when they uh put that in there? Yeah. <sighs> I sat, in, I sat right behind uh, Julia <laughs> when the scene came up, and they're all sitting at the table singing. First thing she said, she turned around and said, "What do you think?" I said, "Turn around, <laughs> leave me alone." <laughs> you know, and the lovely thing about it is that, um, okay, I said a little prayer, which was the fun part for me. I loved it, mm -hmm. but. I didn't realize that they had another one of my recordings in that movie. Which one? I just don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> too many songs. You got too many songs. Too many songs. <laughs> you got yeah. too many songs. Wow. And I, I, that was a surprise to me because everybody was talking about Say a Little Prayer. Right. And, and they uh, didn't even realize it. Nah. Well, I guess they did, but. When when it came on screen, I said, "Oh my goodness! I didn't know I had two songs in this film." <laughs> another one, another <laughs> another one. <laughs> we, you definitely need a DJ Khaled <laughs> at the premiere. <laughs> wow! Uh, uh, like something like that is like it's just a testament again to just great music. Agreed. I mean, great music is just absolutely timeless. We were talking earlier just about just about the compositions. Mm -hmm. And I was like, musically, it was like, it was like maybe a, a piano band version of, of like Stevie Wonder Changes that would just be and then, but you would be super clean and elegant and straightforward on top of it to where the difficulty of really what was going on, you masked it. Yeah, by making it sound easy. You can sing this too. Yeah. <laughs> you, like, you were half stepping and, and like the chords and the, the string, like, it was nuts. Tell me about it. 
<laughs> I mean, there it's were not those easy at all. times. Literally, I would come off the road and directly into the studio and have to start read off of what was written. I feel like you could have only accomplished that by being able to do that. Absolutely. There's no way that you could have you that you could have said, "Okay, play it for me," or mm-hmm. like and and gone from one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. There's no way. True. That's true. I should learn how to read music. So I can, yeah, you should. Not too late. Take the time and do that. It <laughs> won't hurt you. These kids. It will help you. These kids, Miss Dion, they take a lot of my time. Make them learn how to read the music with you. My wife be wanting to do date night. And it's fun. <laughs> my wife be wanting to do <laughs> date night. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna blame date night on the reason yeah. you can't read music? <laughs> Man. Oh my god. Oh, Lord. Yeah, somehow it's my wife's fault. Somehow, you know, not, she always makes up my fault. Let <laughs> do uh, this. Go ahead, Phil. Tell me what you got for me. Walk on by. <laughs> I feel like that was the first song that, as I got older, I realized you were pretty much telling people, "Mind your business. <laughs> Mind your business. If you see me." <laughs> Just, just keep on going. Yeah, keep it pushing. Don't buy, it, listen. Huh? Stay out of my business. Just keep on. You know what I mean? Just flat out. See you bye. I mean, was was that was was you talking to somebody? You know how they you know uh, how did the kids do now in the, in, in the comments? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. I didn't write the song, but it was a timely time to sing it. Mm. Huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. It Go. suited the purpose. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you feel when you heard Isaac Hayes' version? Love, love, still today, love it. I that, that man just took it to a completely another realm. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like I said, "What is your problem?" Yeah. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't done nothing to you. Done nothing to you. Yeah. Oh, but I loved it. Loved it. Do you feel as if like when, like these songs? Because you have so many so many records that artists were covering of yours. Not mm-hmm. just because at this point, there's no. It's not. They're not sampling it. They're covering, they're covering your songs. Yeah. Do you feel like they were making? the songs bigger, even when you will go and perform them now too? Oh, yeah. They, over the years? They're keeping them alive. They're keeping mm-hmm. music alive, which is so exciting for me. Yeah. You know, this, my granddaughter called me. <laughs> my Grammy. I said, yeah. Have you heard <laughs> Doja, Doja Cat? Cat? Oh, yeah. yeah. Paint it sound red. And I said, <laughs> What's a Doja Cat? Well, What's a Doja Cat? What's a Doja Cat? <laughs> when they start no making those. Idea. Can you get one at Target? <laughs> Can you get one at Target? <laughs> Send me one of those cats. Send me one when you get a chance. And she explained to me who she was and what she had recorded. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. And um, One of the biggest artists in the that, world. I'll yeah. tell you, that's what's going on. Bungie. These babies are finally saying, oh, that's music. Mm-hmm. I want to be a part of that, which is very exciting to me. Yeah. And what they've done is they've just, they just keep rejuvenating Dionne Warwick. Yeah. 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 Which is lovely. Yeah. You know? And I get nice calls from them. You know, it's, yeah, it's really that's a great. fun thing. That's yeah. great. It's, it's nice to hear the new generation um, even desire that. Yeah, they you know what I mean? to appreciate. To, to, yeah. want to, uh, to want to understand it. Like, because what happens is, is that when this Doja Cat song comes out, these kids are sn- so smart and so resourceful. Mm-hmm. Like, they're going down the rabbit hole to find oh, yeah. the original, this original music, music yeah. and they are loving it. They are getting stuck yeah. right. on it because right. there's nothing else like it. No, there isn't. No one is. No one is even trying to venture, and and dare I say, can't. No, don't say that. Well, don't they haven't. That. They haven't. They haven't studied. No. To learn how to 
get to that place. Like that place is not a is not a place you luck up on. No, but you have to stop and think. Every single song or whatever these babies are doing, they all sound exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's only because it's all they know. But once they start hearing me, they start yeah. hearing yeah. Jake Gladys, yep. Yep. Um, they say, oh, I want to try that. And that's what's going on now. And I'm hoping that's what's going on. Because I'm is. starting to hear producers now finally be a lot more musical mm -hmm. and not locked into exactly. eight bars, not locked into 16 bars. I'm hearing, I'm hearing real pianists mm -hmm. play. Poor progressions and Poor things, progressions yes. and mm -hmm. things. Like, I'm starting to hear that. And people are doing what's new and now on top of that. Mm -hmm. But the musical bed, it's like, did you hear that? Yeah, exactly. So... Again, harsh saying they can't, but they're 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 not programmed to just yet. Just well, they're they're on the road. They're on the road. Yes, as they keep digging in the crates. Indeed, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I am so happy about it. I am. It's it's exciting that they they're discovering the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, talk about yeah. yourself. Talk, what, the, the real the deal. The real deal. <laughs> the real deal. The real deal. Um, it says here. Uh, Induction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, ciao. <laughs> ciao. <laughs> <laughs> that has some if you only knew in it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, I, I got to say, um, I was, I, first of all, I didn't even know I would have been nominated the first time. Mm. And somebody called me and said, you know, they... You have to be nominated for Rock and Roll Hall I said, okay, I am. Uh, how nice is that? But very wonderful. And, of course, I, I didn't make it. And yet, they nominated me a second time. And didn't make it. <laughs> and then they called and said, we are putting you in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You don't have to be voted on. So who was the hater? Who knows? Then we got to go, go find. I didn't care if oh. I was there or not. Okay, all right, all right. I am not I mean, a rock it's... and roller. Ah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I just feel if they are going to put Dionne Warwick into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, if they're going to put Dolly Parton into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, then they got to go ahead and change it to the music. Hall of Fame because mm. you're covering every genre now so yeah. not what you created that genre? for mm. so call it the music Hall of Fame yeah why is it called the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because they it was created put, yeah. for rock, the rock and Roll, and roll. Yeah. I get put, it but why they want to put they... their stamp on it they want to put their stamp on it and we're not yeah. going to get too deep um, so how many Grammys I have six six Grammys yeah I have a certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the plaque to hang on you? <laughs> got the salute. No. I didn't get. You did are it. too funny. It was <laughs> 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 Jennifer Hudson won R and B album of the year. I produced and wrote on that album, and he sent me a piece of paper <laughs> after she won. And I just said, I just don't think it's right. <laughs> So every time somebody says, do you have a Grammy? I say, yes. It's just in paper form. <laughs> it's just in paper form. <laughs> well, you should have gotten one. They should have sent you one as well. I'm, I'm going to let you say it. I'm going to show run up in there and say, Ms. Dionne Warwick said, if you don't give me my Grammy, it's going to be some problems in here. Tell them. Yeah. Don't, don't know. And, you and can if, tell them that. And if you don't give me my Grammy, when you see me, walk on by. <laughs> <laughs> When you or see me in the street, get to heaven. walk on by. Or you'll never get to heaven. Or you'll never get to <laughs> heaven. You'll never get to heaven. Break my heart. <laughs> <laughs> what are you about to say to you, you, I have to go to the record that, so this is this is a record that is very special for me. Mm -hmm. Because it was one of the first songs that I learned how to sing as a kid. Uh, okay. That's what friends are for. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Yes. 
Two, and, of the, two of the records that I learned how to sing as a child were We Are the World. Hmm. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. It's we Are the World in the back. Yeah. And that's what friends are for. Yeah. yeah. Two great songs. Great. How does it's it feel times. to have records like that? Like, like, I, like I'm telling. This is like the world is yeah. singing this yeah. in in harmony in unison. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not the right note. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> they might not be There's singing the right that. note. Yeah, and you gonna tell them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But how does it feel to have that? You know, um, when songs like that come along. Mm-hmm. Um, they are far and few between. They really are. Yeah. You don't hear those songs or those kinds of songs every day. No, no. And I, that's the reason you hear everybody singing it. Because mm-hmm. it's, it, it's not only words, it's meaning, mm. it's feeling. It has, you know, the song was written for a film, Night Shift. And Rod Stewart sang the thing, but recorded it. Um, And I found it by watching, or the television was watching me, but the song at the end of the film woke me up. I said, oh, I like that. And I watched the crawl to see who wrote it. Mm-hmm. As it turns out, I'm getting ready to record it with Bert and Carol. I just left the house that day. <laughs> they didn't play this song for me. Mm. And the next day when I went back, I said, you know, um, I heard a song called That's What Friends Are For. Why didn't you play that for me? And Carol... <laughs> Who is, I mean, she's the funniest woman in the world. She's a real hoot. She said, well, now four people know that song. I said, four? She said, now four people know it? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, she said, now Rod Stewart, Burt Backrack, Carol Bear Stager Backrack, and Dionne Warwick now knows that song. I said, well, let's let the world know this song because it's too good not to be heard. Yeah. And I said, and I want to... Call some friends to be a part of this with me. Because that's what it's about, friendship. Yeah. And as it turned out, Elizabeth Taylor was at the session being a friend of Backcracking Carol. Elizabeth Taylor's there. And <laughs> Yes, you're there. Wow. And she pulled me to the side. Dion, can I help you? I said, yeah, sure you can come. You know I'm starting this foundation I said, yeah, I heard, and it's something that you need to do. And she said, well, I know how hard you're working within your community to get these people to understand what's going on with AIDS. She said, would you consider giving me that song? And I looked at her like she had lost her mind. I said, give you the song? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's the thing that needs to be heard that would get people to understand what's going on. And I said, well, let's ask those other three people in there. Mm-hmm. And Stevie, Gladys, and Elton all agreed, you know, that if, because we've all felt the sting, you know, one yeah. way or another. Yeah, yeah. And um, they said, well, if our talent is going to make a difference, yeah, okay, but we got it. So across the board, Writers, publishers, videographers, tapes, studio, everything. Every dime made was from that recording. Oh, wow. Still to this very day, goes to Ampar. Wow. That's amazing. And Clyde Davis called me and said, did I hear right? <laughs> <laughs> so at the time did you I signed hear? the Arista. Yeah. I said, wait, what, what did you hear? You gave everything I said, yeah. He said, do you realize the biggest record you're going to have in your lifetime? I said, and, mm-hmm. you know, that yeah. wasn't the purpose of giving it away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I have reaped over and over and over and over. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ain't about the dollar. It's that feeling. Yeah. I feel very good about it. That's right. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. That... And you know, I, I'm sure that in the long run, C.V. Glass and Elton feel exactly the same way. They've done something that nobody else has done. Yeah, something bigger than yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Congratulations. Thank well, absolutely. You. <laughs> and thank you for the song. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, you I know, sang my whole childhood. I'm glad I heard it on, <laughs> or it heard me right. wake up in time. That's, that's a, those are great phone calls, too. Let me. Yeah, yeah, call I'm going to call my Steve. Friends, yeah, Stevie Gladys. Wonder, Gladys Knight, L. John. and Elton John. Yeah, yeah. And Stevie, while you're at it, you got your harmonica. You got your you? harmonica. <laughs> Just hey, make, make sure you bring hey, that. Bring that harmonica. You be, <laughs> well, he don't you have show up here without it? Any long, he gave that one to me. He gave oh, that? oh, yeah. He sure did. Yeah. yeah. After the session, he handed it to me here. What? Yeah. Sure did. That's my baby, though. That's my baby, though. It yeah, is. yeah. Was, you know, I've been Stephen since he's nine years old. No. Yeah, that's my child. You, I want you to say to the cam, the front camera right there. Yeah. Stevie, get get here to the R and B Money podcast. Get, <laughs> come, get, come on. I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> no. She gonna help you. you get, she gonna help you get a Grammy. <laughs> she ain't gonna help you get she Stevie. Get Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I want to run down this just this list of these few okay. things real quick and just get get your your quick input. Um, your um, Institute of Entrepreneurship and Economics yeah. in uh, South Orange, New Jersey. East Orange. East. East. I'm sorry. East. I'm sorry. Do, do, hey, hey. Don't, don't says, you do that. The, no, I'm just, I'm reading. I'm reading. Stop reading. <laughs> I am reading. She's I, from the East. This is, I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> I read what's on the teleprompter. Okay. East. East Orange. Orange. Somebody going to get tank right. whooped in here. Yeah, I'm sorry. My, my bad. I don't want <laughs> okay. no trouble. That, that was my grammar school. That's where I went to school. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It was Lincoln School when I was there. I started in kindergarten, and um, it's now been the DMA Institute uh, about 15 years now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's great. And, and you have no idea. Yeah. Well, but it's right there on Central Avenue. I had crushed some Dunkin' Donuts. Love that. <laughs> Come on, I love that. Yeah. yeah. I, go, and I go there as frequently as I possibly can. That's awesome. With my babies in that school. Yeah. And, and I love my instructors. They, they care so much about the children, mm -hmm. which is so wonderful. And I get lovely notes from, I mean, I see a lot of them who are just graduating. Mm hmm getting their doctorates now. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's been, oh, we have no idea. That's awesome. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, your Facebook, Instagram series? Nobody asked for this? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, because yeah, you, you do your thing on social media. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, you, you, you be letting yeah. people have it on social media. Yeah, yeah, just, <laughs> nice little punchlines. Nice little yeah. <laughs> Nobody asked for this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. why not? Yeah. And I have little subjects that I want to to know something about. That's yeah. why. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma <laughs> yeah, I'm very nosy. <laughs> I'm very nosy. <laughs> I am. Sound like my wife. I'm like, I'm like, you don't have to know that. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. You don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Call her And I always time. say, please. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um. And then you have a design company. WG Design Lab. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Interior design. About 30 years of it. 30? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's something that I became very interested in. Oh, my goodness. In the early 70s, mm -hmm. I met, um, who is now my partner, uh, but he and an architect, Bob Shirosky, uh, my father's name is Bruce Garrick. Mm -hmm. And um, I was invited to a dinner party. And I went, and they were there. And they came over, and, you know, that such a fan, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you do? And they told me, interior design, and I'm an architect, and we do this, and we flip houses, and that kind of thing. I said, oh, 
And so I said, something I've always had an interest in. So Bob said, well, we're getting ready to do a home. And would you like to come and do it with us? Come on, play. I said, yeah. okay, I'd love to. And that's how I literally got interested in the real deal of doing that particularly. Mm -hmm. um, and as it turned out, I went ahead and became an associate of the design uh, world, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, we lost Bob. Bob passed away. Right. And poor Bruce didn't know what to do. And I, I was on the road doing what I do. Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, Bruce called me uh, about 11, 12 years ago now. And he said, um, I've been thinking we need to get back into the design business. And I said, oh, well, let's think about it. And after talking and talking and talking, uh, we decided, yeah, why not? So we are back in the interior design business. And WG, of course, stands for both of our initials, mm -hmm. Warwick Garrick. And uh, we decided not to do it here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, we are in Austin, Texas. Okay. That's where the company is now. You got a website? We're going. Yeah, it's a website. Okay. We're going to website. WG Design Lab. Give me some. Dot com. Give me some pieces <laughs> from, from the guest house. Hey, my floss on them. You ain't got no WG. <laughs> I don't have a guest house. <laughs> <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> oh my god! Um, well, listen. You know we don't. We don't want to keep you long. We just want to. Make sure you play them right notes. Mm, there you go. I'm going to play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we know you know a lot of music. You, yeah. Yeah. You have sang and written and recorded and orchestrated moments that go down in history. But what the people want to know. Tell them what they want. The people want to know. What they want to know. It's the music that means the most to you. And we call that your. What is it called? Top five. <laughs> your top five. Yeah. Yeah. Top five. Your top five r and singers r and songs We've got to know Before you go Here on the show Let us know Your top five Yes Rawr Yeah Top five One of Elton John's. Yo, yo, yo. All right, Miss Dionne Warwick. Yes. Your top five R&B singers. Okay. Oh, that's going to give me, I have to, I have to give some thoughts yet. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Um, oh, okay. A uh, little ditty called Neither One of Us. Oh, we're going songs first. We're going songs. Did I say songs? Wants to be the first to say. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go song first. Let's go. Goodbye. Mm hmm Gladys tonight. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, here and now. Huh. A little ditty. Yeah. Sung by 
Luther Andrews. And, 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 and what else? By, by the way, come on, tell him. I know where you're going with it. Written by my son. Yeah. Talk to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We pouring champagne now. Don't be able to believe it. Um, let me think here for a minute. Mm. So neither one of us um, here now. Mm -hmm. Oh, some Stevie Wonder recorded called My Love. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know my love. Uh, we 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 in the incredible song. Okay. As Stevie is, is known incredible. to write. Mm -hmm. Um. We have homework. Very spiritual song. Yeah. And it's the kind of song, in fact, um, that can be or could be used as is friends. Same thing. Mm -hmm. That genre. Yeah. Um, oh, a little thing called Bad. Huh. Young man, I mean, Michael Jackson. Yeah. No, that, that came out of nowhere. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of my babies. Bad. <laughs> oh, let me think here. Um, let me put this way: I don't listen to radio. No, this is this is I, your I world. I don't know that mm -hmm. many of these young people. Mm -mm. We want your songs. Are doing yep. stuff. You know, I if I had to stop and think about it, I'd be talking about Otis Redden, I'd be talking about yeah. James Brown. We with all that. Yeah. We with all that. Yeah. You know we with all, all that. So, any one of those is fine with me too. Um, you need one more, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One more song. Okay. I think it's called Turn Off the Lights. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Turn it off! <laughs> yes, that's Theodore. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mr. Pendergrass. Yes. Mm. So would you say your favorite songs and or top five songs and top five singers are going to be different? Um, you just did songs, but you also named the artists. So is that is like, like a combo platter? Yeah, no, anything they sing, fine with me. Those five people I just named, yeah, mm -hmm. anything they sing is fine with me. And they're the top five R&B singers for you? At this point in time, yes. With the top five R&B songs? With the top five R&B songs? I don't know if they're top five any longer. Or they may still be, or not. No, no, I'm saying in terms, in your mind, your oh, top five R&B songs. Oh, in my mind, yeah. Like I so, said, anything they sing. That's the first combo platter. Yeah. That we've ever had on the R&B Money podcast. Yeah. And because it is Miss Dionne Warwick, we accept it. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you want. <laughs> okay. So we're going to make what's called a Voltron, right? And a Voltron is like your super R&B artist. So we want to know what what person would you get the vocal from? What person would you get the performance style from? What person would you get the styling from? And which person would you get the passion from? So oh let's goodness. start with the vocal. What artists of all the artists you know that you love would you get the one Vocals. vocal from to build your super R&B artist? One vocal. Mathis. Johnny Mathis. Johnny mm. Mathis. Yeah. Yeah, San Francisco. Okay, all right. You can flex that. You can flex yeah. that. I'm not mad at you. Johnny Mathis. <laughs> yeah. Performance style on stage. Oh, performance. Hmm. Sammy Davis Jr. The ultimate entertainer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's mean. The styling, the drip. Styling. Mm -hmm. Are you talking? And clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like singing just, or no, the, clothing? The clothing. Clothing. Yeah. Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. Van Carroll. Hmm. Elegant. Super. Classic. Yep. Yeah. Van Carroll. High level. She's one of my mentors. Wow. Lena Horn, Elvis Gerald, Sarah Vaughn. These ladies. 
put it around me. I made me their own. Do you think that we can think we can get that now? Someone just has to do it. I like, just have to do it. Like when I'm talking to my daughter, talking to Jordan, and I'm no, like, No, I can answer that for you. Because unfortunately, and I don't know what it puts this into their little brains. And but then they do own the industry at this point in our time. But they feel they invented show business. Hmm. Nobody can tell them anything. Yeah. Nobody. And they have so much to learn. Yeah. But it's their business now. I'm preaching to my daughter elegance. Elegance. It's so needed. So needed. Okay, last one. The passion of the artist, like the heart of the artist. Who who have you heard that really means it? Who have you seen mm. that really means it? You might think I'm crazy, but who immediately comes to mind is Reverend James Cleveland. Ooh, mm. I don't <laughs> feel no waste time. That's right. <laughs> so shake that church up <laughs> tell me about it <laughs> yeah that's passion mm-hmm. my grandmama had me on that <laughs> couldn't listen to nothing else don't you turn down James Cleveland uh-huh. don't you turn him down <laughs> and turn that boom to boom off turn that <laughs> turn that <laughs> boom to boom to <laughs> turn on that boom 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 to boom to music y'all listen before to. you go there yep talk to me I have to ask this yeah is there anything over time? Like, what's the wildest thing that you bought? All those years. Mm. Well, all those all those years of, of getting to the money. Getting to the money. First hit records, your first records you do, you mm-hmm. go on tour. Yeah. You do you were doing million dollar deals when no one else was. Yeah. 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 And suing people. He's getting, <laughs> he's, he's getting your money. He's getting to the money. <laughs> What is the craziest or wildest thing you bought that you just look back and like, why the, why in the world? <laughs> My first car. <laughs> uh, um, there was a dealership on Central Avenue in Newark, New Jersey. And I saw a car in the window and said, I want that car. And I had the money to mm-hmm. buy it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was not looking my best that day when I walked into the dealership. And I said, um, how much is that car? And they told me. I said, okay, can can I drive it out of here? <laughs> if you're going to pay for it. I said, yeah, I'm going to pay for it. They said, you're going to pay for it. I said, yes, I'm going to pay for it. And he said, how are you going to pay for it? I'm going to give you a check right now. Oh, well. We have to verify. So we can call the bank. They'll let you know I got some money to pay for it. Can I drive it out of here? Sure you can. They called the bank. They said, give a full call. <laughs> 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 I buy this whole different shit. How about this? How about all y'all? How about y'all, too? This is, this huh? is Warwick Automotive. You, okay. you and our Warwick Automotive. <laughs> Warwick Automotive. <laughs> <laughs> my first Cadillac. My oh. first Cadillac. El Dorado. El Dorado. <laughs> it was a green car, and I called her the Green Hornet. Yeah. That was the craziest thing I've ever done in my life. Did you Did you pull up on them, though? I did. You pull, and drove out of there in it. Did you Did you pull up on some friends and be like, <laughs> yeah, you see me. <laughs> you see me. Yeah. <laughs> you want to ride, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not in the Green Hornet. Oh, that is great. <laughs> yeah, that was probably the craziest thing. Yeah, and that was off the first record, or, or that no. you had, had you had a couple records by that time. Yeah, oh, yeah, you had a couple <laughs> by that time. Okay, 
She had a whole dealership <laughs> set up at that time. She can buy 40. She can buy 40. Yeah, give her four. We'd like to also show you the blue one uh, if you want to. I'm going to say yellow. You want a blue lagoon? <laughs> Jesse, you want a blue lagoon? <laughs> okay, we got one, we got, yeah, we got one more, one more one, segment. One, one more segment for you. <laughs> I ain't saying no names. Hey, I ain't saying no names. Yeah, I ain't saying no names. <laughs> I ain't saying no names. Where you was? Who you was with? Uh-huh. What you did? Don't say shit. I ain't saying no <laughs> names. True that. <laughs> <laughs> No, you won't get no names. Uh uh-uh. uh. So, Miss Dion. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Can I cuss before I say what I got to say? Sure, you, can you, you, you know, I've been, because on, on this show, I've been known he to has cuss been a lot. It together. It's quite, all I'll right. Be, I'll you know, cussing. I have said a couple cuss words to here mm-hmm. now. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to be very respectful. Go right ahead. Yeah. Okay, so this segment of the show is important. It's called uh, I Ain't Saying No Names. Uh-huh. We tell us a story, funny or fucked up. Are funny and fucked up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. In your time in this music business, Sheesh. things you've seen, oh, something God. you've dealt with, but the only rule to this game, uh-huh. you just can't say the names. You can say where you been, whatever, all, all of that. Mm-hmm. You just can't say who was there. Okay. And who did it? Okay. Oh, golly. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> I was at the Apollo Theater, and uh, the young lady that was that dressed me was in the dressing room, and this woman walked into the dressing room and just sat down. And uh, the young lady said, um, can I help you? Said, oh, I'm here to sit down. Said, well, yeah, okay. Um, do you know her? Yeah, I know her. I'm related to her. Oh, okay. How are you? She's my cousin. Okay, cousin. So here I come, boogity, 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 into the dressing room. <clears throat> and I walk by this woman. And I say, hey, Varney, who, who's that? She said, she's said, she your cousin. She's your cousin. I said, oh, Really? So I walked out and I said, hello. Hi. I said, um, and what's your name? And she gave me her name. I said, and why are you here? She said, well, that's none of your business. Hmm? I said, oh, I, I, yeah, I think it is. She said, no, no, it's none of your business. I'm here to see my cousin. I said, well, who's your cousin? Dion Warwick. She's your cousin? Really? <laughs> who you, who, who's, who's your mother? Who's your father? You gotta ask that. Yeah. I mean, it was just one of those on and on and on. I said, so you're here to see Dion Warwick? She said, yes, if that's any of your business. I said, well, as it turns out, it is. And what makes it your business? I said, because I'm Dion Warwick. And she... Literally, I thought she was going to pass out because she got caught in this quagmire. Yeah. She had built up her own. Mm-hmm. I said, woman, get out of my dressing room now, please. Well, I just want to know. Get now out. <laughs> she going to look at me in my face and tell me she's here to see me and don't know no, me. No, it's you. Yeah, your attitude. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, she okay, was, it gave me plenty oh, yeah, of attitude. Yeah, 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 she was crazy. I ain't here for you. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm here for, I'm I'm here here for my Warwick. cousin. <laughs> my cousin, too. Yeah, my I'm cousin. here for my cousin. <laughs> yeah, you know, people are crazy. Mm. They're, they're very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, the word crazy. I don't want to use crazy. They're very interesting. Mm. They, they come up with some of the weirdest things. And I I don't know. I've been in situations where they they become possessive. Mm. You know, 
And some of my friends have done that to me, and I've had to calm them down. Your own friends have? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, wait, just one day I'm in here. Uh, <clears throat> no, you don't do that. You know, I've, uh, I've been your friend since kindergarten. And I will always be your friend. But you do not own me. Mm. Yeah. Don't even come on with that craziness. Yeah. Get jealous of each other I'm in somebody else's company. Well, you didn't come see me. No, I didn't come see you. You're right. I didn't. And Dion has not changed. Yeah. At all. I never will. I don't see any reason for it. I like me. I do. I like me. We like you too. Just, we, love, you. we love you. <laughs> we love you. And, you. and you just summed up for aspiring artists and for and for current artists and successful artists how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you said, just you've been you, and Absolutely. you have to like you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, my grandfather told me that ages and ages ago, I was a little bitty thing. He said, "Why would you want to be anybody other than you?" Why? You're very special. You what God made you. He only made one of you. Hmm. Why do you want to be somebody else? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I laugh at um, some of my friends who have gone that maddening line of getting done here and done here and done here and done here and <laughs> everywhere it could find a do. And I tell them all the time, what in the world are you trying to do? You can't improve upon perfection. God made that. Yeah. You can't improve. That's a perfection. You cannot improve on it. And my grandpa also told me, my grandpa was one of the wisest men in the world, second only to Jesus, okay? Mm hmm But he told me a long time, I was in the, how fussing like crazy about nothing. Just yeah, blah, blah, blah. He said, baby girl, what's wrong with you? I said, nothing. He said, something must be wrong with you in here. Going on and on and on. I said, uh, I don't even know what I'm doing, Grandpa. I really don't. He said, well, let me tell you something. Don't you ever forget this. He said, you in there frowning and carrying on. You know frowning gives you wrinkles. Smiling doesn't. I haven't stopped smiling since that day. Hmm. I refuse. I'm not going to have a wrinkle. I'm just not going to do it. Yes, ma'am. I get, I get this little Botox. <laughs> <in my head. laughs> it's, sure. it's called Botox, actually. No, it's not. It is. It's, it's not. It's called Botox, man. Stop doing it. Botox. Stop. She, she say stop. You can't improve perfection, man. That's right. Chill out. I'm not trying to improve it. Just want, <laughs> just want it to last longer. <laughs> 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 we'll smile more. <laughs> you know there you go. <laughs> well, Miss Dionne Warwick, um, yes. first of all, um, we want to say um, thank you. Thank you. For paving a hell of a way for us. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. It's been a joy to me and for me. Mm -hmm. You know, music is a healer. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I've seen it work. Yeah. And I'm thrilled to be a part of it. Yeah. I really am. Well, we feel it. Thank you. And um, it will, that feeling will linger on through the annals of time. I hope so. I'm sure of it. Oh, yeah, yeah it is. It is. Well, the song said keep smiling. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh my God. My name is Tank. <laughs> Jay Valentine. And this is the Army Money Podcast, the authority oh on God. all things R&B. <laughs> and this has been the elegant, the timeless, the absolute amazing Miss Dionne Warwick. Ha, ha, ha.